Um, but you may want to get out and watch a movie if there was ever a yeah. better time <laughs> to get out and do that. It would be this upcoming weekend. We've got Tanya in the studio to tell us all of our moody, moody, <laughs> moody movie needs yeah. over the upcoming holiday. I, you know what? I'm so ready for a break. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a moody little break. But it does. It feels like this is going to be perfect movie watching weather. Yeah, for sure. So this is a great time to catch up. So if you haven't seen some of the big ones out there, uh, like Black Panther's still in theaters, Top Gun's back, Maverick. So, you know, this is a great time to go catch up. But then we do have some new releases. Uh, one we talked briefly about last last week, um, the new Puss in Boots movie is out. Um, it came out yesterday. So that's one the whole family can enjoy. And um, we've got two new ones coming out tomorrow. Uh, the first one is Babylon. And I remember telling you about a month ago how excited I was to see this one. You thought this had, like, Oscar. Yeah, and it does. It's already received Critics' Choice nomination, Golden Globe. It's got Brad Pitt. It's horrible. <laughs> I did not like it at all. I was not, I mean, not <laughs> seeing that coming. I mean, it just is not my cup of tea. It's rated R for a reason. But it's about three different characters who are all involved in the music, I mean, the movie industry in the 1920s Hollywood. And they all kind of have their own backstories trying to make it big. And so it's sort of just um, follows the highs and the lows of their time in Hollywood. Lots of gross stuff. Um, definitely are. Um, so just know that going in. And I mean, it just starts off. Honestly, the it took me about three nights to watch this. Um, I had a screener to watch it at home. I was going to say, how did you watch it? Yeah. And um, I stopped it the first night after 15 minutes. I was like, uh, and I'm, you know, got a good night's rest <laughs> and decided, okay, I'm going to try it. And I watched about enough. 30 minutes and then I finished it up on the third night but um, so why is yeah. it getting praised you know I don't know um, Damien Chazelle is the director he's the guy that did um, La La Land you know feel good beautiful movie and you know I'm sure there's lots of people that like it but I'm just not one of them you know every now and then or it seems like every year there's one big movie that everybody's loving and it's getting all the Oscar love and I just don't get it and this is one of them for me uh, last year it was licorice pizza I mean I thought it was a good movie but I didn't think it was that great um, and then a couple of years ago the favorite you know, everybody loved that one, and I thought it was horrible. So, you know, I to guess, each his own. But that's exactly. why. But that is why you're allowed to have you, you know your your opinion. That's yeah. yeah. But to me, it just was. It's um just a little too adult for me. Uh, but, I get where you're going. Yeah, though. yeah. Um, but one that's a little little better. PG-13 is the Whitney Houston story. Oh. Um, it is also coming out tomorrow. And this really shows her life from, you know, when you see her sign her first record contract all the way to her death. And, um, you know, it to me, it's reminded me a little bit of the Aretha Franklin movie that came out. Uh, I believe it was either earlier this year or last year. Can't keep up with time mm -hmm. these days. I hear you. Um, but you know how it glossed over some of the the dark parts of Aretha's life. Kind of the same here. I mean, you do see some of the the stuff that went on in her life that was on the, you know all of the headlines back in the day. But um, a lot of it is also glossed over. So I thought it was a good movie. If you love the music, you're gonna love it. And I mean, who doesn't love Whitney Houston's music? Um, the best part or highlight for me is they recreate her singing the national anthem, which. I mean, that was something that everybody it, yeah. talked about and still talks about to this day. Um, so the girl that plays Whitney, her name is Naomi Aki. And, you know, I in the previews, I kept saying ah, she just doesn't look like Whitney Houston. But then, you know, that's not always possible. But my goodness, her performance is incredible. She really does become Whitney Houston. So I think they made a great choice. Um, Stanley Tucci plays Clive Davis, who we all know. And then um, Ashton Sanders uh, plays Bobby Brown. So you might have recognized him from Moonlight. That was a big 
um, award winner a few years ago. Has Bobby Brown come out and said anything about the movie? Not that I know of. Um, I was thinking, you know, they did a documentary on her last year, I believe. Um, and I want to say that some of the family was kind of opposed to it. And I, I really can't remember the details. And I can't remember where his... Uh, where he lied with all of that, you know. It would just be interesting considering, you know, he's still with us. And... Yeah, I know. Bless him. He's had so much <laughs> loss. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> Bless his heart. I know. And then the final one um, is The Whale. This one has been out for a little while, but it's wide release this weekend. Um, this is the one that Brendan Fraser's getting all the love for. And his performance is incredible. The movie overall is good. Um, but he is certainly the standout in this one. It's rated R, uh, but he is just a recluse, morbidly obese man who is a teacher and he's doing, you know, online teaching, pretends like his camera doesn't work because he doesn't want anyone to see him. And he's just kind of, you know, lived this very alone lonely life um and he does have a daughter that he tries to reconnect with so that's kind of what the movie's about but yeah brandon definitely deserves every every have you seen that one you saw that yeah one. yeah he he is really is really that incredible streaming or is that just um no it's only in theaters right now so i'm sure it will be streaming pretty soon i know like top gun is streaming starting tomorrow i think really? So I know, you know, you can still go see it in the movie, though. And I would encourage you, if you haven't seen it, to see it at the theater. But that would be a good one to sort of rewatch if you want to just snuggle in and be warm. Definitely. Dwayne and Brandon wants to know, how did you like the Avatar movie or have you seen it yet? I still have not seen it. Because it's a commitment. Yes, it is a commitment. (laughs) And I am determined I'm watching the first one again before I see it. So that is one of my plans for Christmas. Your, they mentioned their son saw it last night. I'm curious, did your son enjoy it? You can let us know your their thoughts on it. Um, I haven't heard anyone that's seen it, but yeah, me either. It's like I think, but because, I hadn't asked either. Yeah, well, it was released. I, I'm probably the same for you. Like those few days where my kids were getting out of school, and so there were just so many other things going on, and I feel like a lot of people probably are in that boat and will probably go see it during the break. I've got several friends who have took today as an opportunity to go see Puss in Boots, and so I'm hope I'm waiting for their to see if it'll be something for the family to go. Yeah. Mainly for the little one. Not so much, I know it's going to be a cute movie, but more like, will she enjoy it? Yeah. Now, the, when I saw it, there were a lot of uh, adult only. I mean, a lot of people in there without kids. So that tells you how much, you know, he resonates with everybody. <laughs> I just love Antonio Banderas. I mean, his voice is the best. I do. I appreciate that. He reminds me of the... Well, what's the little thing on uh, Lion, Witch, in the Wardrobe? I think it's the, is it the first one or the second one? It's the little mouse, the, or is it the mouse or whatever? I can't think of his name. Anyway, he reminds me of the same sort of personality, and we had just streamed that the other night, so it was on my on my mind. Speaking of- Reaper Cheap? Yes! The little, and he gets to go on the other side at the end of the movie. He gets to go to, anyway. And so they had that same kind of might, small but mighty- you know, gusto. Yeah, about yeah. Confidence that you know you don't think would fit the, you know, the the body. Yeah, or I guess the animal or whatever. Yeah. Streaming wise, what could we catch up on? Do you think? Um. Well, you've got Spirited, which is the um Will Ferrell and um Mark Wahlberg. Is it that, no, it's not Mark. Um, um, I can see. Ah, I keep wanting to say Channing Ryan Tatum. Reynolds. Thank you. Yes. Ah. Yeah, it's their little holiday movie, a twist on A Christmas Carol. Um, And, of course, Top Gun Maverick tomorrow. Lots of Christmas movies. Netflix has three or four originals that they've filmed or made, and they're all cute. So, um, And, of course, all your Hallmark movies are also streaming on the Hallmark app. Um, I think you have to have cable service or pay for a Hallmark subscription to get that. Um, but then also, um, you know, just movies in general that are floating out there, The Holiday, Love Actually, um, Last Holiday, The Last Holiday with Queen Latifah. That's a great one that deserves a lot of love. Of course, Elf. Um, 
So you my, and one of yeah. my favorites that's on Disney uh, is Once Upon a Christmas and Twice Upon Upon a Christmas, and it's Mickey and Minnie and the gang, and they kind of reenact little stories. And that was, I mean, they've been out forever. Um, but those were our favorites when my kids were little, and I still have to watch them every year. Well, I am going to have to introduce my girls to that. Yeah. The littlest one would love it. She's a mini freak. All right. Well, we've got plenty to watch and catch up on this week. And if we, we'll see you sometime next week. Yeah, I'll be here. All righty. Stick with us. we get got more for you coming up next.